over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Yeah, yeah, yo, welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pasco the New England representative, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do with Shutterworth the GOAT artist, LB Lauderdale Boss, you know what it is, Soul Wars creator, ringgangradio.com in the building. Yes, sir, Ring Gang in the house forever and always, and as always, I got my man with me, my other man with me, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. What up, you already know who this is. Your boy King P, Bodega P, Bodega Box in the building. Ring Gang Radio, let's get it. Hey, Bodega P, straight from the sewer. As always, you know, keeping our city safe from all types of mutated creatures and, and samurais, you know, that be wearing tinfoil and shit like that. And playing yeah. against turtles and putty, shit like putty, that. Putty Patrol foot soldiers today. <laughs> exactly, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the shit never stops over in this area. And as always, we saloon for a service, you know, keeping our cities and street safe for our children and whatnot. So it's all good. But uh yeah, man, we know we got plenty to talk about tonight. You know, boxing is boxing is slowly getting its footing back into something of normalcy. You know, there's been a lot of other things that have been popping up. You know, n- not really the fights as much. The fights have been set, but a lot of the fuckery that's been popping up. That's for damn sure. Uh, but before we get into discussing that, you know, we just want to, I just want to, we just want to do a quick recap from the last uh, top rank car from last Saturday. You know, the double header. Um, first fight on the first big fight on there was um, Joette Gonzalez, who was, of course was trying to redeem himself after pretty much getting, you know, was twelve blanked, years old. <laughs> blanked against Shakur Stevenson, and then Miguel Mariaga, who was, who was trying to get some footing. You know, as a featherweight, I mean, Lord knows that dude. Already been, that, Lord knows that dude has already been put through the ringer. I mean, having to face Walters, Valdez, and Lomachenko in his title shots, shit. You know, I mean, I mean, dude, dude, dude is, is is very weathered for that. That's for damn sure. Um, so yeah, you know, basically, I mean, I was, ex- I was, I mean, basically, I was expecting just a little bit more from that fight, but I think this fight, pretty much, I think showed me and i don't know if lb or p if you agree with me that mario is probably starting to wear down a little bit um i mean that's kind of a that's kind of an understatement yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of wear and tear on them tires yeah very much and then and in in at first i thought okay you know because he was laying some shots on joe gonzalez and even then he still managed to like give him some trademarks and whatnot so clearly like, the power was there but what wasn't there was like the defense wasn't there for um, for Mariaga and Joe Gonzalez was literally just able, you know, to walk him down, to slip shots, to parry shots on the inside. You know, he did his thing, and he pre- and he pretty much, you know, as the fight went on, you know, went on, just whooped him. <laughs> yeah, just piled up the points. Um, yeah. he really showed a di- whole different fighter from the the Court Stevenson debacle. Cause yeah, that that performance was a debacle. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll be like Larry Merchant, you know, you, you did some splaining, son. You you know, you 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 did some splaining. I give him his props. He he looked real good, like almost a whole different fighter. I know styles make fights, but you know, Mariaga's no pushover and he kinda, you know, beat Mariaga up. Even though Mariaga got his in a bit, you know, but still, it's yeah. boxing. You're gonna get hit. And he just did way more hitting. Yeah, exactly, you know, so, I mean, so, yeah, it was, it was definitely a different performance. I mean, obviously, if he'd actually stopped him, that would have really punctuated it. But like I said, Mariaga is a tough guy. He's a very tough guy. And I, but I do think now he's getting a little bit, he's starting to get a little bit worn down. Like, the hard fights he's had, the brawls he had, you know, you know, it's, it's starting to take hold on him. And, you know, he's not shot, but he's getting there. Um, so, I mean, Joe Gonzalez, you know, it goes to distance, and Joe Gonzalez wins a... Uh, you know, pretty much a clear, you know, 10 round decision. So, I mean, obviously, you know, this will probably go a long way for him actually either going back to either challenging a featherweight champion of some sort. Uh, I mean, and, you know, featherweight, although it's on a lower profile, I mean, there's still, there's still competition at that weight. You know, it's just, you know, obviously we'll probably have to wait in the next couple, at least six months to see how everything will play out in that division. Um, 
Mariaga, though, I just don't think. I mean, Mar- I mean, he's he's had lower, he's lowered his competition after those uh, those uh, three aforementioned fights. But yeah, I mean, he's clearly he's clearly declining. So I mean, he might want to lower his competition even more. I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, man, and then you know we had the the main event. You know, we had Mean Machine. And for the love of me, ESPN really had a segment, you know, trying to say, you know, how to pronounce Mean Machine's real name. Uh, I, oh, I, I, Lord. Yeah. I don't think, any, I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> I, I, I don't think either, but, you know. And, you and know, no, disres- no disrespect to wherever he's from, and the foreigners and your Eastern Europeans or whatever. We're not trying to shit on you, but I don't think any, people just call it Mean Machine. We don't need to try to pronounce his real name. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> That, that's that's what it is, bro. Like, yeah. just be glad he has a cool, you know, fucking nickname. Right. And, and just leave it at that. You know, shout out to all the countries that fuck with us. You know, Switzerland, Sweden, Belgium, all them places, France, Spain, all that. It's all good. But, you know, every now and then you get a name that's just, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> no, no, you know, you know, we ain't gonna just keep fucking it up all day, you know. Cause right. I just do do everybody a disservice, so you know, mean machine it is. Mean machine indeed, you know. And then he, in you know, in his first fight since you know putting up a you know a good performance against Terence Crawford, you know, he faced someone who used to be signed to top rank, uh, Mikkel Zuski. Now Zuski is largely unknown to American audiences. I himself, I've actually I've seen him live because he, I mean, years a couple years ago. Uh, when he was fighting on the undercar for Superman from Far Two, and like I said, as I, you know, this was a mantra, and Canadians love this guy. Even though I was watching, it, I was like, I, ne- I just didn't get that guy. I didn't get this guy's appeal. Like, I mean, I thought he was, I thought he was kind of basic, you know, um, for what he was. I didn't think he was anything special. But you know, I, I see the angle. You know, if you want to try to rebuild me, machine, you know, I mean, what better you know, get someone who was a former. You know, a foreign signee for top rank, you know, so um, the fight was kind of interesting in a little bit because Zuski pretty much was, I mean, Zuski's jab was on point. Like, Zoo, like his jab and the and his, his shoe shot combination was actually giving me Machine some a little trouble. And he was actually winning them rounds, um, clearly, you know, and it got to play, I think, by like round five. You can see me Machine had a, had, you know, had a noticeable trademark around his eye and stuff like that. And you know, and you know, and this is you're good. And in, 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 in all my head, I was thinking to myself, if this dude loses, I know, I know, LB is gonna say something about this shit if he actually loses this fight. And people are gonna say shit about this fight. It, I say if he if he lost it. And, it. and it was looking like that too, until I think it was like the sixth or seventh round where Me Machine finally was like, you know what, I'm losing. So let me let me go put this shit in the second gear. And he caught dude with a with a mean uppercut. And then, and then a, a combination dropped him, like near the end of the round. Like you know, Zuki was Zuki was all done. Like he he was all done, but the bell saved him. You know, and then after that, you know, Mean Machine wasted no time. When that bell rang, Dude rushed out, boom, 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 dropped him again. Referee was like, Nah, nah, this is over with. So, you know, Mean Machine saved himself. You know, he he, he rescued himself. You know, from a, from a, from a possible loss on the cards, because I think he was, I think he was either losing on two of the cards or on all cards. I forget. Um, but like I said, if he had lost, it would be very hard for you know, you know promoter and company to rebuild him, because Zutsky's not really a you know, it's not really a factor at well to, at, at one forty seven. Um, so like I said, Mean Machine, he won, and then after this, he mentioned he wanted Crawford again. And it's just like, well, I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> you know, I I just don't see him. I mean, Crawford. I mean, I don't I don't see Crawford. I mean, although Crawford gave him his props, I don't think Crawford is in a rush to get in the ring with him again. You know, barring some sort of mandatory situation. And matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even put that in the air because you just never know. <laughs> with the hey, you know, Aram licking his lips like, hmm, getting his little Birdman hand rubbed together, thinking about that shit. Yeah, exactly. Though, but I mean, but that, that that was the type of shit that you actually needed to see from him. Machine, like, like it's a, he, he got a, a decisive knockout loss. I mean, win, excuse me. And uh, 
he yeah. needed it because he was getting that uh, postal treatment with that jab. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, he was, and I was just like, you know, he couldn't. Yeah, I mean, like, said, if he like, it, yeah, I was like, that dude is so busy. Like, he couldn't, he, he he couldn't adjust, and luckily he adjusted late. You know, I was like, you know, because you can't give you can't you can't give the trolls more fuel to you know to you know, fuel all types of. Uh, you know, shit talk about him, but he put him away, and that's all you can ask too. And he put him away brutally. So, you know, good for you know, good for him. Um, but yeah, like I said, overall, I mean, the car was oh, the car was okay, but you know, kind of long, it was a little boring. You know, I appreciate the commentary like that. It was just kind of dead. Yeah, the commentary yeah. was kind of it was awful. it was it was long and mid. The worst combination you could have. Yeah, yeah, like the whole card was like literally putting me to sleep. I kept dozing on and off. I'm like, mm. ah, like, like ESPN sometimes like top rank have a fire card, and then every now and then they'll give you a dud like this one where you're just kind of struggling to damn stay awake because it's so overproduced and you keep having four rounder after six rounder after four rounder and mm-hmm. ah, like. Yeah, but, in, in, but, it, but in this case, I mean the main the main fights actually started earlier, fifteen minutes earlier, because I think they realized they couldn't they couldn't pad that shit anymore with other with like dead time or some other. Well, they had the cause I was watching it from like I think seven thirty or or, or or eight eight o'clock or something. Oh yeah, 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 the four rounders and shit like that. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> like, man, like yo, they. And then I don't know what they was doing with the commentary. It just um, yeah, it, it was just it, yeah. The commentary was the B team on there, like yeah, yeah. It was like you know, I mean, Ward actually had the night off, which was you know, and for some reason the, the commentary was just wasn't on um, point. Uh, yeah, because you need you need him and Bradley arguing with each other, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. That's the only way Ward is entertaining to me, bro, and, and that and that's from in the ring and in the booth, like. <laughs> Facts. I gotta hear him push for a knockout that he know damn well he wanna do himself. Mm-hmm. I gotta see him score a fight wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get checked by Bradley for it. Um. Word. It, you know, it's just a whole process, you know, and, and God forbid, COVID left fight, and then I gotta see him, you know. And go on about the uh, the psychological aspect of fighting and bullshit. You know what I mean? so. Yo, word, yo, word is a word is a funny cat. Yo, he be like, I mean, it, it, he he speaks well and everything like that. We, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. But sometimes, do be full of it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like, oh my goodness, like. <laughs> That's when I, I never got about his career because he acts and talks like a like a righteous guy who's full of himself. But he never fought that way. Like mm-hmm. usually, dudes who are full of themselves could like dig deep and give you some type of passion about something, and it's like, yeah, that Ward, shit just didn't exist. Yeah, no, Ward. It's hard. I mean, Ward is not a very emotional or expressive guy, and that's not his nature. I mean, I mean, dude, Don't talk your ass off in that commentating booth, though. Yeah. I mean, he has his moments. I mean, I've, I mean, I've been around him. I've heard him be passionate at times, but it, it doesn't last too long. I mean, dude is just like, but dude is just like, he's like nothing could bother him or nothing interest him. Like he has that same robot. Look. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, uh, you know, but that's more though. But I mean, him being not on that kind of did take because it's, it forced Bradley to be. I mean, he couldn't be as controversial, and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't sauced either. So. You know, he his yeah, comment yeah. was just like, eh. you know, it was, it was just there. You know, and then the fights weren't all that, you know, great either. So, eh. yeah, on paper, you would seem like it would have been, you know, it would, would have at least one would have been some fireworks. But yeah, you know, sometimes you know, fights on paper don't necessarily play out in the ring. I mean, it, it happens, you know. Yeah. yeah just or to Zaire just- Rahim and Asalino Freitas. <laughs> I was hyped for that fight, but that shit turned out so stale. Yeah, or, or, and, 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 or sometimes you know you get the fights on paper on paper that are not cool, you know, and when you know they turn out to be some something ridiculous like Adam S and Adam S and Tashera last year. That whole car was fire, you know, yeah. and they, they had no reason to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just whenever, whenever I think of. Whenever I think of fights I was hyped for that turned out to be like the ultimate dud of all duds was the damn 
a Bradley um, Bradley Alexander car. Oh, yeah. oh that's another yeah. one. Yeah, that that I throw was, it in the throw it out, throw it in the trash. That whole card I was hyped for, and I ended up getting what we got. Yeah, that that whole that whole card was just a whole bunch of trash. Like in the main event, like I I, I was heated because I was I was an Alexander fan, like you know, and it was just like I just could and I hated Bradley. I didn't like his fighting. I still don't, you know. But it's just like just seeing Alexander not being able to handle that. It was frustrating. And then he, you know, he got him, he got himself out from that fight. I was like. Uh, you know what? Let me go drink and then go to bed, man. I'm, I'm done for the night, man. You know, you know. Oh yeah, that's disappointing. And then, of course, in contrast with Bradley, though, Bradley Provanikov was, you know, ho hum on paper. But you know, we saw what we got with that. Man, I, felt, <laughs> man, I, I knew that fight was gonna be good. Like, I knew that fight was gonna be decent, at least decent. I, I, I wasn't thinking that fight was gonna be bad. Like, yeah. Pro, yeah. Provanikov had too many fucking, like. Yeah career mode type of moments on ESPN where he's giving you wars and then Bradley could be real aggressive when he wants to so it was you know it wasn't a highly touted bout but it was something that you knew you couldn't sleep on like I mean in this particular case the only reason why I watched it was because hey because I mean it's 2013 that year like a lot of fights were either getting cancelled or postponed because of wild shit was going on so nigga was just like you know what let me, I gotta watch some boxing until fucking um, Rio Salvador 2. And, you know, that and that fight pretty much stole the whole fucking year. Bradley Provodnikov. Like, nothing, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it's what I'm saying. It's funny how sometimes the boxing gods, when you know, like, you, oh, you know, what, you know, like to play games with us. And like, okay, you know, you think this is gonna be a mid card? Bam, you know, you know, we'll, 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 you know, we'll make this happen. You know, it was, uh, yeah. It was a good night of fight. It was a good night of boxing. But yeah, just like I said, you know, you know, hopefully, you know, the next, you know, pair of ESPN cards that we get, um, you know, or, you know, a little bit better, you know. But like I said, we'll see. A lot we'll, better. You know, it's it's all, it's all for the it's all for the boxing gods to decide. <laughs> okay. So um, next. <laughs> yes. So now we got the recaps and you know the random boxing talk you know out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the mid out the way. So <laughs> yeah, you know, they, yeah. Yeah, like spark that loud up. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of fuckery going get on. That turbo pack. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, no. There's there's been a lot of fuckery going on in the boxing world. The first one involves one Saul. Canelo Alvarez. Now, whoa, whoa, we we getting on Turbo Fist right now, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fuck, nah, hey, nah, nigga. nah. We, yeah, you're not you're not gonna delay this Turbo Fist work. Yeah, I said more. spark the, yeah. the Turbo Pack. Yeah, oh, yeah, nah, we, nah, not nah, the cinnamon we, pack. Yeah, we, oh, my nah, bad. We, yeah, yeah, we smoking on Gary Pack right now. So. Yeah. Okay, you see. Real and, quickly. Yes, yeah, so, and and it involves you know one WBC featherweight champion of the world, Gary Russell Jr. AKA Ooh. Mr. Groundhog. <laughs> AKA Mr. One fight once a year. Yeah, he's the real one time a year. AKA yeah. Mr. hates PBC but embodies PBC. <laughs> yes, much to, you know dualities. <laughs> yes, the, I, the, you know, the irony is not lost to me as I you know, as you've heard me, I've talked about PBC shortcomings and unfortunately that particular part of my, you know, my rants and stuff like that. Gary embodies it completely, you know, and, and it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> but, um, but yes, you know, even before that, you know, Gary's still a very talented fighter. I mean, he's also a very difficult fighter to beat, which is why it makes people frustrated with him when he doesn't fight. When he does fight, he fights someone, you know, that they want, they want him to lose. I think he's one of the, he's one of the fighters that people want to lose. You know when he, you know when he fought Jojo Diaz. You know there was a certain people, there was a certain person on this podcast that won, that thought he would win. I would say, you know, he didn't know any better. I mean, he didn't realize that Gary was, you know, you know was elite, and you know he schooled him and took his zero, and then that made, that, and that young man, you know, went on to become super featherweight champion in the next division. You know, so I mean, he learned from that. He learned from that ass whooping. But um, <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, nigga. <laughs> You're about as full of yourself as, as war, bro. Nigga, that's not me. That, that's the truth, though. That's not me. It's not like I'm saying lies. Gary Russell hasn't whooped nobody's ass. Like, he ain't whooped no Jojo Diaz. Jojo Diaz was hurting this man. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but he still won comfortably 117, 111, though. Yeah, nah. Nobody... Fight was closer than 117, 111. 
nobody's rooting for Gary to lose. They just want him to fucking fight better competition, nigga. I, I'll and take more the often. I, nigga. I'll take the king of the TBA run over this fucking run. Yeah, he, 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 like, damn sheep herders from Mongolia and shit. Like, hey, that's PBC shit, bro. You know, I mean, PBC was like, you know, I, I, I mean, King Tug, I didn't, I didn't want that fight either, you know, but it happens, you know, WBC be wilding sometimes with who they float up to their mandatory, you know. So, what are you gonna do? Uh, but anyway, anyways, but anyway, as Gary, as Gary is in, you know, in year five of his run, you know, he is the longest reigning American champion and the second longest in the world. You know, uh, you know, I, how, many, I, how many, how many people has he defended it again? Hmm. I don't know, five people, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you think it'd be a champion for 10 years with like seven defenses. <laughs> the defense uh, rest. But the funny thing is, like I said, though, he's still beating more champions than Wilder, though. So that's... <laughs> Wilder has 40-something fights. So, I mean... <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know, we done got at Wilder enough. Like, you know, and, and Wilder <laughs> never had the I'll, I'll never stop doing it. So, But anyways, you know, Gary has been, you know, running his mouth lately. Gary's been on social media. Gary, Gary for someone... Running them hands. Yeah, <laughs> for someone who says he's not on social media a lot... Gary B, he, he, he talks about, he talks shit about everything. He talks shit about everyone. Like, bruh is like, you know, he, he, he melts off. Like, whatever comes to his mind, he, he says that shit. Like, constantly over and over again. You know, and it's like, and you know, it is what it is. You know, most people was like, oh, you know, that's just Gary Russell. He's, he's gonna talk, he's not, and no one's gonna, he's not gonna fight. And then, you know, Devin Haney came into the picture and you know, everyone, you know, pretty much Devin Haney has been known as the email champion because, you know, on some unfortunate situations, where you know Lomachenko said he wanted to be a franchise champion, and then you know, bam, you know Haney became champion via email from the WBC, and then they strip him, and then there was some more fuckery, and then the WBC reinstated him as champion via email. <laughs> you know, it's it's a whole bunch of nonsense. But anyways, you know Haney is a, you know he's a young man, he's talented. You know, I mean, dude, you know, dude has you know has a little buzz going, but his competition, you know, it's time for a step up for him. So it's just like you know, and Gambo is not the answer. Fuck no, it's not the answer. Yeah, no, nah, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't need to see a one-legged man in the ass kicking contest. I'm good on that. I mean, first it was Fortuna, but then Fortuna was then sent off to face Lenars, and then of course that fight got canceled because Lenars got COVID, and then afterwards, you know, it's like okay, Haney had no real opponent, so it was, you know, it was Gamboa, and I'm just like, you know. Gamboa should no be nowhere near a title shot at all. Like, yes, yes, he went to the twelfth round with Tank, and you know, but he popped an Achilles, and he was he didn't look all that good. Neither the Tank, but it was it was a fight that you know he needed to just go somewhere, and not necessarily next to a, to not to a champion. So, but um, so when Gary started talking this shit, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe you know, maybe this, they they might get they might get this shit going and whatnot. And of course, this which led to a, um, a, I guess, an appearance, a live podcast that Gary did um, with, uh, you know, with another member of the Boston media. And then, you know, Devin Haney's father, Bill, came, you know, later came on. And I'm sorry, you know, but that, I mean, I don't know if you guys seen the podcast. I mean, LBP, have you seen that podcast? Unfortunately, no. I didn't even get the catch. I saw maybe clips of it, and you know, it just yeah, it just like a bunch of street niggas, you know, yeah. talking about boxing. It's, it's, it's shit. They used talking about who got respect and who this, that, and who's a one. This it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah in, in between that and Gary was giving his woke history lessons about Moors and how blacks and you know, like the original Moors. Like honestly, I had never heard any shit like this before in my life. I mean, well, not the Moors situation. I mean, I've heard talks like that. But I've never heard any boxing situations where they're, where they're trying to get two niggas to fight, and and Gary's out here talking about Moors and the meaning of it, and meaning of black, like dog. And then you have Bill Haney is like, yeah, you know, OG this, OG that, you know, you know, like this, you know, we got we need to get money out here, you know, expecting. I was like, it's like, you know, does David Haney have a real manager? I'm like, I'm sorry, like Bill Haney, Bill, Bill Haney does not strike does not does not strike me as someone. 
who who knows business too well. At least not the type of business that he should be to try to front. But no, if he got some A one niggas in the hood that said it's okay, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's cool. What you talking about? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like they naming people that like like motherfucker. I don't know these dudes. Like, it's, yeah, you know, who? Like, all due respect. Like, you know, it's all good. But I mean. Yeah, what this yeah. shit got to do with the fights, bro? Like, yeah, you know, like, it, it, it just it just seemed like it was just a whole bunch of like how many and how many hood niggas like that do I can I actually name in this podcast? You know, yeah, it's a, it sounds like one of those damn masterpiece songs where he just naming motherfuckers at the end, like <laughs> Yo, Peanut, uh, 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 Roscoe, Pookie, <laughs> like, bro, like. Yeah, like it's a, and it didn't help too either when one of Gary's mans, you know, his his, his, his longtime mans came up, and he was also spitting some nonsense too, you know. It was just like like, and then of course he's mentioning like his own got no doesn't have any money. So I was like, how does this fight? How I mean, first of all, how do you know? How does this fight? Does I mean, does this fight? Does this help the fight get made? Like, does it help? You know, does it help get Devin and Gary Russell in the fucking ring? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Like after like after a while, uh, after a while, I was just like, I just want this shit to end, you know. And it did, and I was just like, like I just there were just more questions raised than any answers because it didn't seem like nothing, nothing was settled on that, on that damn phone call or that that damn podcast. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Yeah, it was just a whole bunch of rambling that was a waste of my time. I wish I could get that time. Can I? Can I reclaim my time for that stupid ass shit? Hey man, cause from the y'all better than me, cause from the clips I seen, it's like I wasn't, I didn't feel compelled to like, like let me see this podcast. Let me like, nah, I'm, I, I'm good, man. I, I know some nigga shit when I'm, when I hear it, like, and this was just some, some regular, you know, we on the corner trying to promote a, or, or get a fight, you know, we shouting out hood legends and you know we talking about add one mixtapes and it's just a bunch of bullshit, like. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm not. But yeah, yeah you, know, like, you know, like niggas was talking about beef video, uh, beef DVDs and shit like that. You yeah, know? like that shit's like, you know, that's a, a whole decade ago. Like y'all bringing that energy to boxing, like it's cool if fights get made. I, I love for that shit to happen and fights get made, but we in an era where dudes run their mouths and is this nigga real? This that that too often and. No fights come from it, right? Right, and, and, like, and like the only, the only thing, the only real thing that I was able to get away, you know, I was, actually, I was able to get from that, from all that that he was doing, was that Gary said that yes, he did receive the contract from the Haney's, you know, and you know, and then, and then I think they briefly talked about like some of like what the provisions are, I and mean, I think one of the things that Gary insisted on is. Um, if there's a rematch clause, he wanted to be um, at the venue of his choice, venue and channel of his choice, not the venue, really, the channel of his choice. Um, which is, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not going to trip on that. Now that's, I mean, it, I mean, it happens sometimes, you know, like I said, I mean, obviously, in that, but that would only be the case, obviously, if he, if he lost, no, no. Yeah. If he won or lost, yeah, if he won, no, no. If he, if if Gary won, he would get to choose for the rematch. The next, um, you know, win, the, you know, basically the provision of where they would fight at. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think I think the and I think the other one was he didn't want like he didn't want to be tied down to any extensions or anything like that. Right, and then that yeah, and that's and that's when oh, it's so weird. he could fight again, you know, more than once a year. Yeah, he wouldn't be mad at that shit. And and that and that's when that's when what Gary's man was talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, we don't need to be tied down. You know, this one guy got no money. I'm like, how's this? How's this? How's this conversation even productive at this particular point? That was a big <laughs> waste of time for for two dudes that's not gonna fight each other. Like, I'm yeah. telling you, like Gary Russell's like, you know, he's he's like the BJ Saunders right now. Like, you know, he's always running his mouth, talking shit, and then, you know, and getting everybody riled up and hyped up, like, oh, okay, he's going to fight Canelo, he's going to fight Smith, he's going to fight this guy. And then what happens? Jobber, career mode, you know, WB title fight or some bullshit. But even, I mean, even after all that, I mean, I know, and then, but after that, you know, Gary started, I think, you know, started blaming more people. I think this is, this is where, this is where boxing media 
you know, sometimes gets its bad reputation among like certain, you know, certain areas of boxing. Because now it got to the point where Gary was going on, you know, on certain, you know, podcasts talking about that um, that Heyman and Floyd Mayweather, of all people, were holding him back about this. And yes, some people, and yes, some people of the of certain of these of these certain of the certain group of box media agreeing with this shit and spreading this shit. And I'm like, how in the world is this actually? Con- is, is this first of all? How is this even true? Like, I mean. Like why? Why is the agenda changing all of a sudden? Like you guys, um, are thing and I mean, you're saying another thing now. Like I mean, what? I mean, all it shows is who's getting paid by who, who's on the payroll. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you ain't bring that up because ain't he the one exposed that you know some of these boxing media members are getting paid to post videos and promote. Yeah, you know, and some and some of them are doing it for cheap too, like hundred dollars and shit like that, nigga. Yeah, I'm just getting hold out for real. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying like I mean, I would expect it would be at least like a four figure amount if you want to be, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you know, hundred dollars or, or a high three figure amount. Yeah, exactly, nigga. I'm just like that's just like it was like like niggas is prostitutes. Hundred dollars, like, <laughs> like, like. Tch- like if I rock with you, I rock with you. But if you if you if if for pay, you know, now nah, ain't gonna be no hundred dollars. Like, yeah. and it's not like a hundred dollars a month. It's more like hundred dollars when we give you. It's like I mean, yeah, the shit that that payola shit is absolutely real. <laughs> you know? What I'm yeah, saying? like I'm just like yo, I, yo. I mean, ring gang is here. I mean, y'all want to throw money? <laughs> yeah, you know. What I'm saying? At, least, at least you'll get a song, highlight videos, articles, all all that shit. You know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like when you fight, when you fight coming, I'll gladly write. Whole type a, a, a nice sixteen or something about about in my prediction video about how you're gonna win and how you know how eloquently you know you're gonna whoop you know whoop the next nigga's ass you know what I'm saying yeah. so, <laughs> shoot us the shoot us the one one stack or two you know you'll get a whole program <laughs> and get and get a car you probably get a cartoon appearance too <laughs> real yeah talk. for real like you you'll get the whole shebang like you you'll get more for your buck if you fuck with Ring Gang like yeah know. exactly. If y'all gonna just do all that shit, you know what I'm saying though. But uh, but yeah, it's just like it, it was getting it's gonna kind of crazy. And then I think Gary, I mean not Gary, excuse me, Devin, you know, went and pulled you know pulled Gary's card again, you know, saying that both Al and Floyd, although I don't know what Floyd has to do with this, but they both green lighted the fight. I mean, because the first thing like we heard that the money they agreed on the money was like 1.5 million or whatever, you know, and it's like okay, you know. And then his, but and another too, because I think the reason why his man's was saying about his own didn't have no money because at the time they were talking about the Canelo shit, and you know, and obviously we'll get to the Canelo um, situation in a little bit. Um, but you know, they were like, okay, Dizone has no money because Canelo is suing them, Canelo, you know. But you know, clearly I think they have millions to actually at least they have some millions to spread around. So after one of the investors probably going to have to sell a painting or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but uh, but yeah, it's just like, I mean, Devin let that slip, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, who's capping now? You know, <laughs> who's capping now? Man, that sound like a like a dope Aretha Franklin song. Like, who's capping now? Like, oh, remix. That might be a fire hook or something like that. Yeah, like who's capping now? <laughs> Hey, I, I want the fight. I deserve to get 1.5 million for a fight that won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, des- I deserve to. I deserve to impress some imaginary street niggas I never heard of. Uh, and speaking like, of, oh man, like that shit. That shit was just funny, man. That's like a whole skit, like. And, and, and there's also there's also one other thing too, like the date that they have penciled for that is November seventh. Gary wanted that to be done. The day after Christmas, like dog, like oh, so the fight was gonna be in Tokyo. <laughs> you know, was Monster gonna make an appearance? Like, I mean, they're the only ones I recall making fights on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve or New Boxing Year's... Day. You yeah, watched watch it on Box. He won it on Boxing Day, like literally, like the Canadian Boxing Day. So it's just like, so shout out I... to PJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's just like, I mean, obviously, I mean, after Christmas is just pretty much like who in the world. I mean, of course, if you don't celebrate, obviously, Muslim or you just don't believe in pagan holidays, like, you know, some people, 
you know, that we know or whatever. You know, that, that's all good. But who in the world is actually going to be fighting like that? The day, literally the day after Christmas. And I think For like, two American boxers. Yeah. So, so, it, so that was the whole. That was another thing that that got thrown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, I'll fight you. Um, set it up for February thirty first. <laughs> like, fuck out of here. like, come on, man. Like, yeah. yo, like, why are we even talking? But still talking about this shit. Dude, if this fight happened, I'll take my, I'll take my words back. But I highly yeah, doubt this. Yeah, yeah. Because right now I mean, we have Eddie Hearn that's that's the porno promoter move. So yeah, you know, uh, August seventh, Devin Haney will either face the Yuri Gamboa or WBC featherweight champion Gary Russell. You know, and right now Gamboa is in the driver's seat when. And that, these are his and those were his extra words I'm just like Eddie you just done fucked up right now you just you, you pretty much you're not I mean that's not what you want to say to get people interested so like I said um, yeah no Haney Gamboa is a waste of time Haney and Russell actually has some intriguing actually you know it it, 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 will, it, will, it could benefit both careers Haney because it but it's be not going to happen just like Farmer versus Tank didn't happen yeah. and that should have more build up and more bad blood than this shit yeah, and the, and the and the boxing gods acted accordingly to that not happening. You know, there was yeah, a lot, was, remember, remember far, Farmer Jojo Diaz had build up too, and it didn't look like that was gonna happen till the last fucking second. <laughs> like I don't know what Matchroom be doing to these, you know, you know, to these lower weight divisions, man. But <laughs> they have so many anticipated bouts, and they just fall through. So I mean. Ain't, ain't, ain't much shit to say. I'm tired of talking about these niggas, really. Like, yeah, though, it's like I mean, shout out to all the street niggas out there, you know. Yeah, you know, Haney, you know, like I say, you know, whatever happens now, Matchroom really needs a good hard look at this whole situation, and we realize that, like, you know, you can't afford to not put on intriguing fights, especially for someone. With I'm the saying, um, like Haney's team is. Haney's team is what? I was saying, and Haney's team was like pushing for the Gary fight, so it's like it'd be a fucking disappointment if it didn't happen because they're like, Bill is like, we want, we want Gary, like we want, and, and nobody else, like they want, they want Gary Russell, so it's like, oh, see this not happen, it's like what the fuck, yeah, I don't want to see Gamboa. Yeah, we've seen this show happen before, you know, it ended up being Haney Gamboa. If we're lucky, we'll get Haney Fortuna. But um, yeah, no, nah, it's not happening. That's not gonna happen. So um, we're fucked. I mean, I'm mixed. I have mixed feelings. It was like, on one hand, I'm like, uh, you know, does does Haney really have to fight a fucking a uh, a featherweight and bring him up to lightweight? Uh, it's not a good look. But then I remember, oh wait, Gary was talking a lot of shit of. Like, never mind the ridiculous, I'll go up to 147 to fight Terrence Crawford. And the, oh, uh, I'll go up to 130, uh, 135 to fight Lomachenko or Tank. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. He's been talking about bullshit and doing that, all that. Oh, I'll move up. So fuck it. Move up. Get your ass beat. I don't feel bad. Yeah, if you want to cash out, let him cash out. Fuck it. Like, you know. But we know it's not going to happen. So next. Yeah, next. 